Welcome everyone back to my third tutorial part of our deep learning tutorial series where I do step by step everything with NumPy. So up to this point we have initialized our deep parameters and wrote forward propagation module. Now we will implement cost function and backward propagation module. Same as before, we need to compute the cost because we want to check if our module is actually learning. To compute the cross entropy cost, G, we'll be using the same formula as we already saw before in our previous tutorial series. So we used this formula. And now I'll try to do it fast and rewrite our uh, function of this. So I already wrote it before, but Okay, I'll write it again, so it will be compute cost, and inputs will be our AL and Y. So here we'll take a number of examples or uh, we have, so this will be first one. Then we'll uh, compute the cost, so I, right now, uh, let me check again how it looks like. and. Okay, uh, so it will be minus 1 divided by, by m multiplied by numpy sum. And here will be uh, i multiplied by np log. And here will be al inside of log. And plus 1, um, one minus i. 1 minus i multiplied by, let me check again, and 1 minus i log multiplied by numpy log 1 minus al. So, so al is our prob probability vector corresponding to uh, our label predictions. So it's the same shape as 1 and number of examples. Well, similar as y, where it is our true label vectors. So, okay, the, this is already cost, and we use a cost as a numpy squeeze. So, you remember that we, well, for example, we remove a numpy array, simply talking, and here we'll use our return cost. So this is only few lines of code, so I won't test it, and as it was tested in my previous tutorials. So now let's talk about backward propagation function, and I have a figure here. You can check it, and just like with forward propagation, we'll implement helper functions for backward propagation. We know that propagation is used to calculate the gradients of the loss function with respect to the parameters. So we need to write forward and backward propagation for, as before, for linear ReLU, and then I go, then again is linear and sigmoid Moodle. So this will look like this, exa exactly like this. So it's similar to forward propagation. We are going to build a backward propagation in three steps. So there will be one function for linear backward, one function for linear backward activation, and one function for final backward model. So let's begin with linear backward function, and it will look like this. So for layer L, the linear part was like this. You can here see here a multiplication. Z equal to W multiplied by L minus L minus 1. I mean alpha A it's and plus B. So I suppose we have already calculated the derivative DZ here. And we have caches. And we want to get uh, our DW, DB and DA. So... There will be uh, three outputs, as I just mentioned, it will be computed. These outputs will be computed using the input dz. And here in our next figure, and here it is, next figure. And here is the formulas we need. They are from our 
two layer neural network tutorial series. If you go to my previous tutorial, you might see them and we will use them. So I just start to code, it's quite fast, this will be. And here I'll create a new function, so I'll define it as liner backward function. And here will be our DZ and cache as input. And here we cal we take a, a previous activation and W and bias from our cache. Next we calculate how many examples we have. So it goes from aprev dot shape of one. So next we had their uh, formulas here. So I'll just implement them. They're quite short as you can see. So what I'll write here is DW will be equal to one divided by number of examples and multiplied by numpy dot of dz and cache caches cache zero or i can write a preview previews doesn't matter for example i can write it as a previews and we use it as transposed because of this so next i'll copy this so this will be our db function so the beginning is the same and here we use not dot but sum dz and here i'll just write um axis will be equal to one and keep dimensions will be equal to true just like that and next we finally calculate our d da previews so here we numpy dot and here is again caches from one so this might look like this but actually there is a uh, weights so we simply can write weights dot and here is our dz you can see here weights yep that's exactly weights and here was dz as you wrote so everything is quite fine here and last step is to return our calculated parameters so dw and db here i save it so yeah we, we finished our liner backward function now we can move forward with liner activation backward function so we will create a function that manages the two helper functions so it will be linear backward and uh, backward step for the activation so our activation was relu and sigmoid so to implement linear activation backward we'll write two backward functions and this will be sigmoid and relu i'll scroll up and where i have them and i'll write them here because i want them to keep close to me so i'll define a sigmoid sigmoid backward function and here now input will be da and cache so here is just like that and here i take a cache and here is our simple sigmoid function so i just can write sigmoid z i think i suppose so or i just can write as sigmoid so I, i'll write it like this actuation and next will be a uh, dz will equal to da multiplied by our sigmoid and again multiplied by one minus sigmoid that's our derivative of our sigmoid and then we just use a return dz function that's quite easy and one more we need to write similar functions so this will be our relu 
ReLU backward. And again, the inputs are the same. The A cache, I can zoom in that you could see better. And here is our Z equal to cache. We again start our cache. And here, now it will be a little different. So our DZ will be equal to numpy array. And here we just con converting DZ to a correct object. So we simply copying it true. And now we are actually doing our derivative. So it will be like that if our Z is equal or less than zero, then it will be zero. That's like that. And we use our return of DZ. So you might ask why we are using this in our activation, but well, that's a little complicated. So if you we are searching for derivative from our activation function, so we need to multiply it. So but it doesn't matter for you, I think, but I just wrote it like that. So, OK, we finished our backward ReLU and sigmoid functions. We can move on coding our linear activation backward function. So I'm going to my code here. And I'll define a new function. So I'll call it linear activation backward. I'll add activation backward here. And our inputs will be da cache and activation just like that and here I'll just use a liner cache and activation cache here I'll take them from cache here and as we used a uh, relu and sigmoid so we need to write both of them so it will be for example, if actuation is equal to ReLU, we do a ReLU actuation, ReLU backward function. And here is our DA, as we wrote before, and activation cache, just like that. And next, here is our functions, and here we use a liner backward function as we wrote formulas before. So it will be liner backward and here I'll just use a liner backward and liner cache instead of cache. So that's it. We wrote a backward ELU function and next we need to do the same for our sigmoid and here I'll use a sigmoid if our activation is sigmoid we actually do the same but instead of real we call it as uh, sigmoid backward that's quite easy and here i use a return of da previews dw and db yep and sorry and, and yeah, I think it's okay. And we might test this. I think this tutorial took a while and I will complete our backward function in next tutorial. In next tutorial, we'll write our backward final module and function to update our parameters. And after that, we will finally train our model. But for now, I still we can still test it out with our code so what we didn't do we didn't try to compute our cost so let's just try it again and before it was 4 to 10 i'll change it to 4 to 4 and we don't have a parameter of y so i'll just add again a numpy array and here i'll just add random numbers this is my just i chose these numbers doesn't matter why i chose them 
So, and one more. We need to print them, I think. So, let's call, print a cost. So, our cost will be equal. Equal, just like that. So, to something. So, I'll just write a compute cost with my AL and Y numbers. So, here I have AL and here actually there is a predictions yl and here is my actual actual labels so yeah that's it and we can build it and it shouldn't be any errors and it should give us some kind of output so here it is the cost and yep yeah, we receive it and we would like to reduce it by doing a backward propagation so as i told this tutorial might take too long if I'll start building a fully backward propagation model. So I'll just complete it in next tutorial. So thank you all for watching. I hope this was useful for you and this will help you to be better understand deep learning, how it works and how to build a deep neural network. So thank you again for watching. Good luck and see you in our next video. One more time, I'll repeat, subscribe and like my video.